Welcome everyone to the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships here in Sheffield, England. The entire tournament being staged in the wonderful English Institute of Sport, the home of British Para Table Tennis. And for the next week also the home of European Para Table Tennis. My name is Matea Pinter and alongside me in the commentary booth this morning I welcome Gavin Maguire from the Irish national para table tennis team. Gavin, welcome. So we'll be starting you off on table one with the wheelchair games men's singles class three competition. Before we begin with Thomas Schmidberger and Dacian Maxim. Let our thanks go to the ITTF British Para Table Tennis, Table Tennis England, Sheffield C City Council, the UK Sport and the National Lottery for helping us stage this entire event. The championships overall have attracted 267 competitors from 35 countries competing not only for the medals at this European Championships but also for the 22 singles tickets to the next year's Paris 2024 Paralympic Games. Our daily schedule will run from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and uh, the entire competition schedule as well as the, the other matches streamed can be found on the ITTF website. If you're still wanting and can come Para Table Tennis Live, then tickets are available online via the British Para Table Tennis. Welcome, but um, to start you off now, once again, men's singles class three, one, two, five wheelchair classes in Para Table Tennis. A quick reminder for everyone at the beginning of this competition we have 16 players in men's singles class three divided alongside five groups world number one thomas schmidberger here will be facing world number 39 dacian maxim quick start for the Romanian 43-year-old here. Schmidberger still needs some warm-up, it looks like. <laughs> the current European and Paralympic champion. So probably nothing but gold uh, in, in sight for him at this tournament as well. And it is uh, the first match of the tournament, the first game, so always a little bit uh, warm-up time needed, perhaps. Yeah, his uh, last uh, international performance was in, at Slovenia Open this May and he was injured just before that. Uh, so I suppose he'll have to uh, get used to playing in top form as well here. Yeah, he's won all the 15... Uh, matches against this player before only lost one game <laughs> so i don't think uh, today should be any different and he's catching on at the start of this first game
has nothing to lose and um, courage and determination <laughs> is all that can bring him through possibly here. Three players in this group one. Roberto Rodriguez, the third one, and two will be advancing to the next stage of knockouts. So even a loss here against Schmidberger doesn't necessarily mean Maxine is out of competition. Uh, yeah, uh, it can be. On the other hand, uh, it also means that uh, should you advance, you won't be meeting them later in the knockout stages, so it can be a plus. <laughs> time in the lead in this game Thomas Schmidberger just in time <laughs> if he still wants to win this it's not an easy position to be in when uh, everyone expects you to win and you know yourself that you'll be happy with nothing but winning not just this match but the entire tournament here and it costs him the first game that he was leading actually the entire time on the battle for it. Yeah, he pulled through uh, in the end here and I don't think the next two games will be uh, as tight. Thomas Schmidberger and Dacian Maxim back for game number two, 13 minutes in the first game, 11-9 to Schmidberger, just like the 45 sets he's won against Dacian before. Uh, just one that uh, the Romanian took. He had a nice chance in this first game, but so let's see if he can make things any differently here. given in I think uh, he he anticipated what you were saying and tried the aggression part of this uh, of this attack first and you simply can't expect a player like Thomas Schmidberger 
making easy mistakes uh, for three games in a row. Strong start once again for uh, Maxime. Schmidberger isn't making this easy for himself. <laughs> that more in the lines of what you'd expect. Owl break as allowed every six points played. I think Maxime will try everything now not to uh, let Tom get his groove back. to not allow him to do something like that. Five, he started being a little bit more aggressive with the serve as well, as opposed to the Romanian, who's just looking to start off easy, so to speak. to elbow position in and then it is now Tom Schmidberger who's always looking for the corners. Things are going now the way <laughs> we'd expect them to. But to be honest, I know this feeling because uh, I've had the same thing happening to me a lot of the times. Just need a game to, to get the arm running. Yeah, Maxine's still searching for those short corner balls. It's his only chance to still find this, but uh, should be not having any of it. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, he's he's been uh, in a wheelchair almost his entire time he's played uh, table tennis in a wheelchair his entire time so he, he moves uh, around the table really really well especially for a class three and then yeah the long arms and the balance and how he uses his body um, i think that's one of the things at least that uh, make him the strong player that he is and um, leading to zero now
And we only saw two points less in this uh, second game. Now, and I don't think there's, like you said, <laughs> really much that uh, the Romanian could change to still try to win this. Of course, they'll always be looking to do that, but realistically speaking. Possibly the last one, best of five in wheelchair or the whole of para table tennis. That is back and down the line. That really isn't down the line, but a, a corner one. Killer shot. That still works <laughs> if he can get to that shot. Maxine in this third game. He's already at 6 1. And the kind of sir mistake that you're never supposed to do it, actually, but <laughs> even less so <laughs> in a match like this. You can see in Schmidtberger's face now that he, he's in his game mode and uh, every point he misses, he's not happy about. And luck on his side as well. but it really looks like we'll be finishing off this early. <laughs> yeah, and match point will use its 3-0 for Tom Schmidberger against Maxim Dacian from Romania in men's singles class three first round of this European Championships, but uh, we'll be back with you again with another men's class three match later on, 9.45. Thank you for now and enjoy the rest of the team.
will run through Michaela Brunel from Italy and Sandra Mejakovic from Serbia. The umpire is Jonathan Whitaker from Scotland. On table four, we're in singles band three, Alina Canova from Slovakia. And Alina Vetekara from Croatia. The umpire is the Arte Nickel from England. On table five, we're in singles band three, Carlotta Ranzini from Italy. And there is Altitas from Turkey. The umpire is Thomas Fussell from England. On table six, men's singles band seven. William John Bailey from Great Britain. Sam Carl Gustafsson from Sweden. The umpire is Boris Bracco from Sweden, Slovakia. On table seven, Men singles plus eight, Maxim Hubert Trzewicki from Poland and Robert Marian Barodiana from Romania. The umpire Nibiru from England. Welcome back everyone to the European Para Table Tennis Championships here in Sheffield at the English Institute of Sports. We're on table one and another match of men's singles class three. World number 10 and fifth seeded Vasil Petruni from Ukraine will be facing on the home hope Romain Junior Simon. With me once again, Gavin Maguire from the Irish Paranational team. Welcome back. Jonathan Chairman Levy from Israel. The umpire is Benny Sambo from Sweden. On table 11, Ben Simbols plus 7, Jean Paul Montanas from the Netherlands, Henry Brown. Quick draw and Denmark. warm up for the both the players. From like I said, we're in men's singles class, three 16 players entering the competition here, divided along five groups in the round robin. Two will be proceeding to the knockout, and just one golden ticket available for any of them to get themselves to Paris early. Uh, most certainly, yes, of course, but um, nobody will be giving up on a chance like this, um, least of all these two. Although um, Simon has said that it's uh, been uh, a big surprise for him to even be selected for uh, this home championships, that he's seen it as a great chance to advance. And he's only been competing internationally for over a year now. Um, so I don't think uh, his main goal will be to look uh, for a Paralympic ticket here, but um, yeah, maybe just uh, enjoy the home crowd, uh, gain new experiences, and um, also maybe uh, do better than for the mixed doubles with Thomas Matthews. And it's worth mentioning that uh, it's been a while since we even saw the European Championships uh, in, in para table tennis. Usually they should be taking place every two years, but uh, due to the corona postponement of the Paralympic Games, um, it's actually been four years now since we last, uh, we last had a competition of this uh, magnitude in Europe. <laughs> Just the championships, right? 
Okay, let's start then with Petruni serving. Taking no prisoners from the very start. Nine-year-old last played at the Czech Bar Open this year. Took a silver in singles there. pointed out what a great experience it's been um, being part of the squad training with the best uh, of the British team. And since Simon has not participated in that many tournaments. We don't have any head-to-head -head comparison for these two. significant lead for the Ukrainian already in this first game and um, Simon using that towel break to try and catch on once again. by the Ukrainian. He doesn't let Simon slow him down. Good serve positioning, keeping Simon in the game. But not anymore. It's 11 6 in game one. Men singles class three. Vasil Petrunio takes on the home hopeful Romain Junior Sang. Uh, yeah, I think first of all, he, he obviously didn't get scared of uh, performing for the first time uh, and in front of the home crowd. Um, but there's still uh, things that he will need to perfect, obviously, um, to, to be more successful. He's got to get better, but I think it's a positive signs for, for GB to see him out here competing and displaying what he can do. I think that ball boy is listening to what they're saying, Matea. <laughs> the other question is, is he understanding? 
He's keeping a, a poker face anyway. As he should be on the job. Privileged position though, to be able to sit there and listen to what one of the best coaches in the world is, is saying to a player. And hopefully not spying for the other team. <laughs> Good positioning again with the serves. Nice start for Simon. those coaches advices worked at the start of the second game yeah good start and he's, he's still trying to be positive even with a mistake there trying to be the one that's the aggressor playing the top spin playing <coughs> always positive uh, he does still have a little bit trouble with this elbow positioning that is a wheelchair <laughs> sore spot so to speak yeah, it's a sore spot everywhere Matea. i think the elbow you've got to do a lot of movement to get out of the way it was always one of my weaknesses too longer rally for this match. Really good though, really positive from uh, Simon here. I'm really impressed with what he's doing. Yeah, he's not trying to slow, uh, slow the game down, so I think that works well for him. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's the shot. Yeah, it's one of those, you've just got to watch it go by you, Petrunia. like a penalty in football if you go the wrong way there's just nothing you can do about it but it's it's not an easy one to repeat on and off <laughs> no high risk but high reward and Simon rewarded with a significant lead now in the second game this is one of those moments that's very telling now though Get, lose a couple of points here. I'd start the back Petrunia, but if you can get a point or two on the board, we've got a game on our hands. Yeah, that forehand hasn't worked in Petrunia's favour this game. Wonderful, <laughs> just a little bit out of reach then. Yeah, he did everything right. Seems to me Petruniev is having a little bit of trouble dealing with the spin from the Simon serve, giving Simon a lot of chances to play difficult angles and attack balls. Yeah, that he that is what he's wanting to do as well. just a little bit of this might be a moment for a towel break maybe a little bit of inexperience not going to the towel box and you can see there time out from the coach absolutely I think the, the towel box should have been where he went to calm himself down slow it down he rushed into a mistake there yeah because the nerves come in then when you see your opponent trailing <coughs> you like this it's one of those moments when you when you can see the winning post you start to tense up a little bit and 
he didn't play as freely and as attacking as he was prior. And just that little bit of a difference, a net ball, an edge ball, and uh, yeah, that's all it takes. Yeah. I'm a big fan of these kind of timeouts, though. There's many coaches in the world that leave timeouts to later stages, but the, the coach here recognizing that he needs to get this set on the board if he wants to have a chance. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, uh, if he loses this game, then there won't be a later opportunity uh, for the timeout to be useful exactly. at all. Exactly, exactly. So we've got a huge point on our hands here. Simon does serve, so that's... I think that's actually a mistake on our graphic. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Petrunia does serve. All right about that. little bit of tension as I said saw the winning line and now a few mistakes creeping into the Simon game yeah, just all collapsed for Simon now at the end of this game well, Petrunia was just giving him a, a lease of life here a little lifeline missed the service and a mistake Petrunia did all the work to get back in and then two really unforced errors This must be difficult for Petrunio now. All this work to tie things up and then, uh, yeah, basically he lost it himself. Yeah, complete shock really. He did everything he needed to do to stay, get back into the game. Got his leading his advantage to win the set and go 2-0 up and, and he blew it. Very animated in the corner, the coach here with Simon, telling him what he's got to do for the next set. And to be honest, I think he's going to be saying to him, do what you did early in the set. Be aggressive, be positive, play with your shots. You know, don't be afraid. Don't get sucked into a, into a passive game. Yeah, just some encouragement, some energy, some motivation now. He pulled through in the end uh, in the second game, so why not in the next one as well? Absolutely, he'll take a huge amount of confidence from that. start with a Petrunia of error. Yeah, both of them a little bit nervous at the start of this game, I would say. Yeah, I think we have to remember here, first game of the tournament for both players. It's a major championships. We expect to see some shaky performances. And Petrunia didn't know what to expect, having never played Simon before. But on the other hand, his ranking positions and experience, of course, spoke for him. Beautiful angle. A little bit more of that, please, Mr. Simon. We want to see this game go on a bit longer. Give the home crowd something to cheer on for later as well. Absolutely. To get, get in the mood, create the atmosphere we want.
He's wanting to play that wonderful forehand uh, top spin, Simon, but just misjudged the spin on that ball a little bit. Yeah, I feel like when, when Simon is putting the ball out to the, towards the middle of the table, if Petrunia plays to the Simon forehand, we're seeing a little bit of uncertainty and some errors creeping in. He moved him very nicely far out now, Petruniev, and then that dreaded elbow middle. Yeah, and that, look, that's what the Paratalians is all about, exploiting each other's um, movement issues, and, and that's, that's how the other tries to take their advantage. Served there by Simon, trying something new, but uh, Petrunia putting it to bed quite quickly. And then another serve mistake, definitely not what you want to do um, at this stage of the match. Well, ever really. No, I don't think there's ever a good time for it, but uh, certainly not here now. Forced himself into a towel break yeah, this time, but uh, it, it's, it could be a little bit late. Yeah, I think that's something maybe the coach said during the, during the break there that, you know, when you have a moment and you feel you need to take some time, go to that towel box. Because he was doing that uh, enough in the first set, but I think then with the excitement of the second one, forgot a little bit. Exactly. Momentum, adrenaline, it can take over and sometimes you forget the, the simple things. Game point. And another service mistake. We're seeing a lot of those here in this game. Really not the normal. Both players, I suppose, trying to take maximum advantage with their service. So the margins are very thin, you're trying to get it right onto that white line and it can lead to a mistake from time to time. And it looked like for a minute that we'll be seeing the reverse of the second game, but uh, Petruniev takes this one home. We have 2-1, to one, best of five played, so we'll be back shortly with game four. Yeah, more chances for the coaches to get a few words into the players. And you can just see the difference in the coach's demeanor for the British team now. Yeah, he's changed a little bit here. He wasn't too happy with that set. Yeah, it's not on your screen right now, but Petrunia was having a little laugh and a joke with his coach on the other side. It's, it's a very different uh, feeling in that corner. Yeah, I think this game finally went the way he wanted it to go. Just six minutes. Yeah, and he's, he'll start to feel now a little bit more comfortable. He's in that. He has his lead that he needs. He's got three sets under his belt. I think uh, it's, he'll be in a much more comfortable position. First one quickly back at the table as well. That's usually very telling. Yeah, absolutely. He wants to get this game over and done with as quick as possible. No matter what happens here though today, Simon has put a really good performance in this far. He's yeah, certainly putting off on a fight and um, that's to be admired, but very realistically uh, expected to win, he couldn't have been. No, but he's put himself in a position where he's played a competitive match with one of the best players in the world. It'll give him a big amount of confidence going into a second game later. And a lot of valuable experience to, to take back as well. Exactly, and as we mentioned before, I think that's really the goal of the tournament here for Simon. Uh, rushing things a little bit now.
also starting to get a little bit animated Simon he's giving out to himself making some shadow movements here that he's not happy and obviously he doesn't have that timeout used in the second set The angles are still working in his favor. Yeah, I mean, he's certainly got a chance here. If he, if he calms things down a little bit, gets back to the game plan, we're still on. You can see again, unhappy, starting to make some fake movements there. And to be honest, that's normally also a telling sign that he's under pressure and he's certainly feeling it. I probably wasn't going into this match expecting much, but when you see yourself having a chance. Yeah, well, all of a, you're, you're dead right there. All of a sudden, he felt I'm in here. I've got a chance. It's 1 1. Expectation starts to rise, and that's when the pressure starts to rise, too, or the pressure you put on yourself, anyway. The worst kind. Beautiful point, but ended with another one for Petruniv. Both players exploiting the shorter angles, making sure their opponent can't reach the ball. Proving very effective here today. That's another wheelchair tactic, start off with the long ones and to move the opponent away from the table and then playing short. Ball hits the net, takes his time, composed, and a big backhand. Now you have to respect a point like this, and it's earning him six match points. Takes on the first one this time. Another fast one and a beautiful conclusion for Vasil Petruniu, winning this match with... 3-1 to one against Romain Simon but both of them will be looking to continue trying to get through from this round robin against Benjamin Marot from Belgium and Maciej Nalepka from Poland for now this is it from us from table 1 and men's singles class 3 but we'll be back shortly at 10.30, so just 15 minutes now with men's singles, class four.
Welcome back everyone to the European Para Table Tennis Championships here in Sheffield, England at the English Institute of Sports, the home of British Para Table Tennis and at least for this week, the home of the best table tennis players in Europe. Matea Pinter with you still and joined now by Farrell Anthony, former British Para Table Tennis player. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's uh, nice to be, for you to be here, uh, and um, it's nice to be um, here. Sort of. Um, what's the? Just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice we'll be taking you through to uh, this men's singles class four match on table one, and it's Abdullah Öztürk for Turkey against Tomislav Spal of Croatia. The current double Paralympic champion in uh, men's class four, the Turk, as well as the double current uh, European champion uh, in men's singles. So uh, clearly the big favorite in this match. Uh, their head to head speaks uh, the same 11 matches, all won by Osturk. Only five games that he's given to Spal over the years. Uh, but uh, this is uh, the first uh, match of this group three. 15 players enter, enter in the competition in men's singles class four, battling on not only for the four medals available at the end of this event, but perhaps even more importantly, uh, the tickets to Paris next year. Absolutely, and the, the golden ticket is the most important thing to some of these players now. So um, it's a big prize to be able to qualify so early for the Paralympic Games, so even though Osterk is favourite, I'm sure um, Spiral will be looking to um, turn that over and um, get his first victory. And you never know what happens in the first match. Uh, of course, the players have had the chance to do their trainings to try out this wonderful arena, but uh, when it's the first match, um, your head and your arms need to warm up properly. Absolutely. Thank you. 
A wonderful angle and some luck for the Croat here. And once again, <laughs> nothing you can do against uh, this one. Although Osterk did everything right in this point so far. Yeah, he's very strong, isn't he, on his forehand side. Yeah, there's not much he can't do, apparently, um, seeing his uh, medal collection from the recent years. World number three and the third seed at this tournament. A great angle there with his backhand from the forehand side as well. Always looking for those angles, of course, and trying to move the opponent from one side of the table to the other, or mixing it up with short to long. Another great forehand winner there from Osterk. Yeah, he missed one of, or two before, and that's that uh, warm-up factor that I was mentioning. <laughs> yeah, you can see how Spal is trying to avoid it as well, playing deep into his backhand and the middle more than forehand. Yeah, it seems to be his tactic, doesn't it? And it's an unforced error from Spal there. Yeah, it was a bit uh, forced on the backhand. Could have used the forehand side, but that's uh, always the question in this elbow area with wheelchairs. Yeah. on the ball for that forehand Osturk and I think he was trying to go down the line as well. Nevertheless he takes the first quite quick game 11 to 4 against Tomislav Spal of Croatia. Yeah I think Spal he just made a lot of unforced errors in that game. It's very difficult to win especially for a game a game up to 11 if you make in two or three unforced errors it puts you on the back foot straight away doesn't it? Yeah, and against a player um, that he's facing today, um, of course, you have to be at your best and at your top to even get a chance. Yeah. I mean, it's um, just three minutes. That was it. Three minutes long, that game. Yeah, and also clearly satisfied with it, coming back to the table quickly. Not much apparently that his coach felt they have to fix. Even taking the time to take a look at the table next to theirs. Yeah. But the Croat is now coming back and will be trying to, first of all, of course, uh, not do uh, as many mistakes as he's done yeah, in the that'll be the key. Games, but uh, he'll probably have to fix a couple of other things as well. Yeah, he's trying again, but that uh, elbow area, I would say normally his strong point, but not today. Right, okay. Yeah, nice, nicely shortened by the Croat, but uh, even better reach. Yeah. Uh, brilliantly weighted for the ball, great it timing. He seems to have a long arm, Roster, doesn't he? Very long arms. There was that killer forehand once again from the Turk. Oh. 
was having problems with everything, really. Uh, the yeah. Croats didn't, it didn't seem to manage have to get uh, yeah, his game on, right? Yeah. Seems to be late and not on the ball in every single point. And again, there wasn't really too much spin or great positioning on that ball, but still, it ends up with a point for the Turk. Yeah, he seems to be struggling, Spot, to put the ball on the table. It's, it's difficult, especially, he's trying to make it harder for Osh to, to, to win points. Yeah, honestly, with, uh, with his demeanour, I'm, I'm wondering if he's injured or having some sort of an additional issue here. Right, yeah. Because he's raced into a 7-0 lead, Ostrich, and he looks um, relentless in what he's doing. Because he's a passionate player as well, and I'm sure he wouldn't be happy with the way he's playing and would have shown it if it wasn't for mm. something else. Well, that's very clever from Oster then. Yeah, wonderfully positioned. Ah, that was that uh, middle back end uh, for the Croat. Yeah. That's what he's been looking to do normally from that positioning. Two good oh, points for him done, now. He's made us to miss, and that's good. She's given him a bit of confidence. He just forced it into the net here. And again, he is really, really struggling, it would seem. And uh, once again, uh, game point very quickly on for the Turk. It's another very quick game, isn't it? It's, um, it's very difficult for Spol. It's when you when you start to miss balls, sometimes your confidence goes as well. Yeah, he is, uh, he is struggling, visibly struggling. Um, admittedly, I'm not entirely sure what with, but uh, yeah, we had 11-4 and 11-3 now. Um, I'd say not even 10 minutes for the both of the games no. together. Um, and you can see that the Turk is looking to finish this off quickly. Yeah, he's come back to the table very quickly. He's not messing about, isn't he? He's, um, I think sometimes as well that can upset the other player that this, you know, that your opponent comes back to the table so quickly. You know, because he wants to get on with it, doesn't he? Yeah, clearly, but uh, both players are experienced enough, so um, even with uh, this level of competition, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a factor to unnerve you, but of course you'll be using everything you've got. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that forehand wasn't really right on the racket for Oster. But this time it was. Yeah. Yeah. Very good combination. Fixed his mistake from the previous point very fast. Ash Paul was trying to be a bit more aggressive here. I'd say it was the right idea because he was really, really passive and making a lot of mistakes before but um, yeah when you missed the point I think because this is the third game as well he's got to do something different hasn't he if not now then <laughs> never we have best of five in para table tennis always so uh, should uh, Osterk win this set he will have won the match as well For the moment, he's matching, you know, he's, he's, he's not too bad, he's, he's 4 2 up, and, and so hopefully, you know, he, he's probably turned the corner. Well, 
Oh, some brilliant, brilliant shots. shots. Yeah, absolutely. Great angle. Two brilliant shots with the back and actually one after the other. The first one long down the line and then short, short. into the forehand. That's, yeah. that's textbook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's the forehand yeah. positioning <laughs> that he needs to avoid yeah. but yeah. by all costs. Yeah. He's not, uh, he doesn't miss many on the forehand, does he, Oster? No, and that's probably Spa's problem as well, because he has to play really, really short uh, if he wants to win that, otherwise it's killer time. Yeah. Back in the lead, Oster. After at least... A more tied up start of this third game. Just a tiny bit short. He's really looking to play with the backhand side of his record far into his forehand, you would say. Yeah. He obviously uh, he favours his backhand, doesn't he? It makes it easier to, to do the switch to the actual backhand side than uh, if he manages to do that. But yeah. Osterk moved him really nicely here and he was too late. Yeah, that, that's, that's that shot again that can be very dangerous because it's not really classic down the line even though it's coming from that side. Yeah. And that's it, I think. Yeah. Except game over, we're, good backhand. We're still um, tied up very fastly here with uh, this third game. It didn't look like it at the beginning, but uh, two-time Paralympic and European champion Abdullah Osturk from Turkey wins 3-0 in this fast-paced match against yeah. Tomislav Spal from Croatia. I think he was waving some of his supporters in the crowd there as well. Yeah, I so. think there's, there are, of course, some spectators, teammates, and, um, well, we have 10 tables here in the venue, so um, other people playing as well. But we will be back with you on table one shortly with another match of women's singles class two, 11.15. Thank you for watching.
Women singles class six, Stephanie Gregg from Germany and Kaiser Stadler from Sweden. The umpire is Paul Pickles from England. On table eight, women singles class six, Katarzyna Marsal from Poland and Erin Dragonaka from Greece. The umpire Thomas Purcell from England. On table nine, women singles class six, Marina Lutzkrojenko from the Ukraine and Camilia Eona Bronsana Surkan from Romania. The umpire is Lindbergh from England. On table ten, women singles class six, Gabriella Constantin from Romania and Merez Tibetan from Norway. The umpire is Sheila Walsh from England. On table 11, women singles class 8, Thu Kamkazonku from France, Nina Red from Germany. The umpire is Lester Smith from England. On table 12, women singles class 8, Aidan Dallin from Norway, Malaya Martinez from Spain, and the umpire is Joshua Reynolds from England. Welcome back then everyone to the European Para Table Tennis Championships in Sheffield, England at the beautiful Institute of Sport Arena here um, together with you again on Table 1. Myself, Matea Pintar, joined by Farrell Anthony, former British Para Table Tennis player and himself multiple time participant at the European Championships. Yeah, happy to be here. Uh, looking forward to this Class 2 um, first round match. Yeah, we'll be seeing um, the first match of uh, Round Robin in this only one group of five players in women's singles Class 2. Anna Porvulovic of Serbia will be taking on Femke Koben from the Netherlands. Battling on, of course, um, throughout this competition, not only for the gold medal, but also for a ticket to Paris next year. World number seven, the Serbian, has won all the eight encounters against world number nine coming from the Netherlands. Judging by the ranking positions, we should see a tied up match, but uh, seeing that uh, both last two encounters of the two uh, from this year, from Slovenia Para Open and Lignano Para Open went with 3-1 to one to the Serb. Perhaps What sort of things should we look out for, Mateo, in this sort of um, particular match? 
Well, a quick warm-up. We have a left-handed uh, player taking on a right-handed. That's always an interesting combination, I find. Um, but in class two, um, so that's that's in class two. Um, of course, uh, one of the lower classes in the wheelchairs. One to five uh, for wheelchairs and six to ten for the standing players. A quick reminder for everyone who's not familiar with para table tennis. Um, so yeah, um, very common use of inverted rubbers, uh, changing up the pace and the rotation throughout the match. So we'll see how these two deal with each other. And um, in this sort of um, game as well, there's, they, we call it the, um, the tetra lob, I think it is. The, the one that goes up in the air just over the net but quite high yeah that's uh, let's say a signature uh, shot uh, for the lower classes uh, in wheelchairs um, you can see the players strapping the, the racket to their arms because they have um, weakened uh, use of their arms as well yeah. Fast start, fast serve for the Dutch player. Yeah, that was that shot. <laughs> At least the first attempt the of first it. The first attempt, yeah. Limited or slower movement of the upper torso for these classes. And yeah, of course, uh, each player trying to take advantage of that so it's a really fast start for Femke Cobham 4-0 uh, to the good yeah, as mentioned she's lost all the previous matches so she will surely be Looking to uh, catch up on that yep. score. Uh, first attempt of the and the successful one, uh, the tetra lob for Pravulovic as well. Almost on the ball, Femke, but missed the timing a little bit. It's a difficult one because in a wheelchair, especially the lower classes, when you go, once you go for the shot, uh, it's nearly impossible to recover the body if you don't uh, hit it on the first try. Yeah. Another reason for the Tetra lobs to be so successful when done right. That has to have to be placed perfectly, otherwise you risk exposing yourself to an easy shot for the opponent. There, that's that, that shot again. Yeah, Coburn was close to um, making that return, and yeah, that's another risk with positioning the serve as she did into the elbow area. It can be a critical one, but uh, a good a good placement uh, for trying the lob. now perhaps forcing a little bit too fast this one quick towel break after every six points the players can do that yeah and after a, um, a slow start um, it's six all okay. 
Yeah, you can't uh, judge the match by its beginning, especially the first one at a competition like this. taking her time, positioning herself, focusing on every point before she starts. Yeah. But still, took too long a break here, perhaps. Well, a, a lot of players try and sort of ex do as much as they can to disrupt the other player's rhythm, don't they? What you don't want to do is disturb yourself as well. No, no. Interesting because normally you consider having the serve as an advantage for the player. It's the only shot you really are fully in control, fully in control of. But here um, the serve lost two of them at a really significant point of this game. And the first set point for the Dutch. Not a bad positioning, but a very nice return from that middle down the, down to the corner. Yep. I think surprised Coben a little bit there. Oh, that was a great backhand. Almost made it back in Pervulovic, but Femke Koban for the Netherlands takes on game one with 11 to 9 against Anna Pervulovic of Serbia in women's singles class two. And she'll be really pleased with that, that she's taken the first game. A strong start at least, or um, something to build up on in the games to come. players back now the Serbian coach had a few things to say about this first game that went to the Dutch Femke Koben surely the Serb will have to change something if she wants to win this ninth encounter between the two that was a great angle from Femke Koben then stangling it off the side very good. Yeah, weak positioning with the serve and uh, actually easy work <laughs> for the Dutch. Has to be done, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Always have to win the point in the end. Make, um, you know, capitalize on people's mistakes or weak, weak serves.
And again, Femko is um, she's actually got a fast start again, 3-0 in this game. A nice example of uh, what an out serve looks like in uh, wheelchair para table tennis. Uh, so the ball has to cross the end line uh, when served, not the sidelines, as was the case here. Uh, coming off just short with the lobs. Um, throughout most of this match actually so far. Yeah, she hasn't found a range really, has she, with the um, that particular shot. And with, as we've said, it has to be done right for it to work. Yeah. But an excellent serve here, just uh, in the corner. Capitalized on both of her serves here. That was a lot better. Yeah, now she's <laughs> found <laughs> her <laughs> groove. <laughs> she <just threw laughs> the when the arms well. don't reach far enough, <laughs> throwing yeah. the racket is. <laughs> I don't think that oh actually nice counts nice. if she hits the ball anyway. Uh, no, of course not. So you have to hold the racket <laughs> in, in your palm to to do that. But I mean, it just slips when you're trying to yeah. to reach so far sometimes. She looks to have a modified handle as well, Femke. She's got a long, a, a, a long, a very long handle in the blade. Yeah, we can see many adaptions of this sort and with the wheelchairs um, in para table tennis, of course, but all of those have to be cleared with classification, written down on your classification card because, um, of course, they, um, they matter in uh, which class you um, are playing in. Now the one trying out the lob <laughs> didn't work out perfectly, but um, Par Parvulovic wasn't right on the ball with her timing, so point to the Dutch angle. Anyway. Oh, that was brilliant, brilliant short serve, especially after she served long uh, into the middle the entire match before, so the the surprise worked out very well. Had the lob and wrong timing once again, but this time in the Serbs' favor. So she seems to have found um, her groove in terms of that particular shot now. So Femke's going to have to try and do something else. With I, I, I don't know how difficult it is to stop that kind of shot. I use a towel break, of course, to collect herself. Uh, what she can do is uh, not place the ball in the ideal positions to go for that shot in the first place. A great serve once again. A difficult call sometimes with such amazing positioning. Is it out? Is it in? But yeah, this one was clearly out. I was just going to say that <laughs> mostly it's the players more than the empires who know um, where the ball went. And I think in this kind, you know, players are fair, aren't they? When it comes to those kind of things, that's the most important thing. They're counting on it as well as a player because when you're fair, you're, you expect uh, the opponents to be as well, and ideally everyone wants to win fair and square. Yeah. It's another tight game, it's another tight game. Oh, 
Just too nicely on the backhand instead of the elbow area here. Beautiful return by Torvulovic. And another brilliant serve. She's really been capitalizing on this one in this game. Three game points now, and she serves. Yeah, she didn't want to risk this one too much, but uh, the return was weak yeah. enough yeah, for great her back to finish, finish it off. Yeah. And we're back to one to one in women's singles class two. This first one of four round robin matches for each player. The Serbian coach looking much more relaxed now in this break than after the first one. Anna Prvulovic of Serbia and Femke Koben of the Netherlands are back on table one for the third game in women's singles class two. One one after the first two. And yet again, the first point of the game goes to the Dutch player. She's had a stronger start in uh, every game so far, but in the second one, Prvulovic caught on and overtook fast. Well, she tried the short serve then. Just fell a bit short, a lot short. Actually. Yeah, she worked it well once in the second game. shortened wide out to the backhand side of Pervulovic. That serve Pervulovic has been using so well wide into the forehand. Good fast serve. I think Porvulovic complained a little bit here about how high the ball was tossed by the Dutch player. Yeah, there's that serve back. Hold on, I must say that since that last one in the game two, it does feel like she's trying to play it a little bit more safe. Well, it's good return. Yeah, and that's actually what we've been waiting for uh, also on the lob balls, just to demonstrate um, 
how it can backfire when it's not positioned as short as it should be. Good idea, good placement, and accompanied by luck. <laughs> yeah, always, it's always nice to get a bit of luck. Sticking to that fast back and serve to Corbin's forehand but it hasn't paid off as much uh, in this third game as it did in the second. That one was brilliant though. <laughs> having some discussions about the legitimacy of that serve, apparently. I wouldn't say anything was wrong with it, so... Point to the serve and serve to the Dutch. that was in or out do you corner, what do you think corner placement now by the dutch i say in and apparently so does everyone else <laughs> <laughs> it looks very close yeah like i said it's close call but when nobody even complains you can be pretty sure yeah, that yeah, uh, yeah. it was all right Serving and succeeding for a win in this third game, 2-1 two -two for Femke Koben against Anna Porvulovic. Explain to the viewers, Mateo, about the um, differences between the serving in, in, the, from, in, in the wheelchair game and serving in the standing game. Uh, yeah, like I was trying to mention um, before with uh, the ball has having to cross uh, the end line. Uh, so that's uh, a speciality not uh, for para table tennis, but just for the wheelchair part of the para table tennis. Uh, so, yeah, the ball, when served, uh, cannot cross one of the sidelines, but has to cross the end line of the table of the opponent uh, for it to count. And, of course, that's only the rule for the serving part. Uh, can't rotate backwards. That's another one. Um, other than that, um, I think we've had it covered and <laughs> they, okay. they've demonstrated uh, this a uh, couple of times now nicely. Uh, the advantage we do have uh, watching the table from this angle is that we can really see quite well um, when the ball went over the sideline and when it was the end line. Yeah. And then apart from that, everything else is just, um, just like a normal game of table tennis. Yes, of course. Other yeah. than that, we have the same table dimensions, the same rules. Uh, best of five in para table tennis always.
your favourite shot once again, Farrell? Yeah, it's, um, she's executing it really well at the moment. I've seen this bean touch and go all the time. And really depending also. And she's again a bit weaker with positioning of this uh, serve for Vulovic and punished right away. third variation in the serve that she's tried now finally worked she looked a little bit lost there for a second when her long fast serves to the corners didn't do the trick yeah it's um it's quite interesting to see the variation in serves and how how they execute them especially the short ones because they are the shorter ones are probably more difficult to to execute. Yeah, that was out, at least uh, by my sight. The Serbs are complaining, but I'm not sure what the call on it was. The Dutch coach now asking the player, she says out as well, I think. So they'll probably repeat the serve. Oh, no, that's, that's the one. Even more difficult to do with the forehand, to be honest. So impressive hit for Pervulovic. Earning her the lead now, and the serve is back as well. Bringing it more and more out uh, on the backhand side. Yeah. Is that a good run of points for Bulovic? Um, which is probably giving her a bit more confidence as well. Yeah. really trying to place the ball right into that corner good switch to the elbow area now with the serve positioning but uh, Pervulovic was ready for that one That's the one. She's had a lot of success with that serve, hasn't she? So, um, yeah, and six game points now would bring her into the fifth set, which is what she needs. She wants to stay in this. Just quickly drop in two points here to Coben's serve. I wonder if she'll go she for the... Make yeah. it right now with her own. Yeah, and that was it. Perfectly placed. Wreck it off and on to the break for game five, the decider. The decider.
and for the first time today and at this competition the players are coming back for game five the decider in para table tennis Anna Parvulovic and Femke Koven the winner of this one will take home this first match in women's singles class two and of course at, um, when it gets to five the first person to get to five they'll swap over an important one too because uh, we only have one group of five players here so every win counts and it's Corbin to get on the score sheet first once again great angle but again it was a weaker serve it's, it wasn't in the right area so it's easy for, like you said it's easy for her to get the angle yeah that's what happens when you're a little bit nervous trying to play it just a bit safe high stakes of course at a competition like this one that's a very good serve, very clever. Yeah, just have to wait if it will cross the end. No! Oh, it's <laughs> not crossed the end! <laughs> <laughs> See if you, if you ever wanted a demonstration of the difference between the wheelchair serve counting and not this, was it? Right, yes, that exactly. Some high level excitement. So it has to go off the, the end as well. Yeah, 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 it has to cross the end line, like we said. Here it crossed the sideline. So she's taken a strong 4-0 lead, Coburn, which is um, in her position, she, she's never beaten the Pulovic before. So it, um, you know, it, could, it could play to her advantage this game or um, you know, she might get a bit nervous as she gets towards the end. Yeah, and what a place to do it. I'm not sure what this break or a timeout was about now. She's very much in the lead, but apparently she needed it. Yeah, neither player have taken the timeout so far, have they? As far as I'm aware. Oof. That's what you don't want. Because in table tennis, a shot like that can cost you the next few points as well if you yes, let it, it stay in your head, isn't it? That's right, yeah. And see, especially when the opponent does what you were wanting to. I just call the time out. A uh, towel break, I towel, think. Towel break. Okay. And uh, yeah, good time to make use of it. Okay. It will be Pervulovic serving though, so she'll have to brace herself. <laughs> Femke Koban to stay in the lead after missing out on two points when she was serving. Oh, that was a good serve, right into a difficult area to get the ball back then. But she's definitely called the timeout now. Yeah, the timeout <laughs> now, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it was that one shot that turned things around really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Then instead of 5-0, you have 4-3. It's interesting that Pravulovic has not gone back to her corner. She stopped at the table. Yeah, she's probably thinking it would just take her too much time to strap off the racket and come back. And if she doesn't need it, the coach could have just come over and said a few words. But yeah. it's not her time out. No. 
And she's obviously really focused, having won the last she's three She's the points. one catching on now, yeah. so she won't be wanting to um, drag this on. No. Perfectly prepared for that return. It wasn't angled enough. And 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, so from leading 4-0, she's now it's now 4 all. It just shows you how quickly the game can change. They'll be changing sides, whichever wins the next point now. And it's five in a row for Korvulovic. Really turning this around now, literally and figuratively. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And it, um, like you said, the the turning point was probably the smash that um, Cobham missed at 4-0 when she missed the forehand. She's serving twice now again and or uh, once again and she has to win this point, I feel. Yes. Good enough or not good enough uh, from Parvulovic. It's really hard to call who will actually win this game. Honestly, my money would be on the serve right now just because uh, of the momentum of the match. Okay. I capitalized really quickly on both of her serves as well. Yeah. And this one worked, the so, so important one. Big point for her, especially seeing how well mm. she's been using her serves as opposed to the Dutch. No. This one was a little bit forced. Nevertheless, she's won eight out of the last 10 points, which is to get herself in this lead. Didn't look like uh, the serve was done the way she wanted to, but point for her anyway. And now four match points four for match Anna Porvulovic. <laughs> Getting a bit frustrated with herself here. She does get another three chances to finish this off. Oh my god, that was just on the wrong side of the table for Pervulovic. I had mm. to take a look here for a second. So close it was. She might take a time out. No, she's not. And once again, we're really close. I was going to ask you if you had taken a time out because I was thinking about the same thing. It It would be too late now, but apparently she's counting on her serve to do this yeah. one last trick. And it does. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant Point, serve. game and match to Anna Parvulovic for the ninth time against Femke Koben from the Netherlands in this first match in women's single class two. Back again shortly on table one.
At 12 o'clock will be Yuri Matishin and Gavin Maguire for women's singles class four and five. But for now, we're saying goodbye. Myself, Matea Pinter and Farrell Anthony. Thank you. Goodbye.
Welcome back to the English Institute of Sport in Sheffield and our next game here on table one is Sandra Mikolaszczyk and uh, Megan Shackleton and uh, GB interest here again with Megan Shackleton. I'm joined by Gavin Maguire. Gavin? How's it going? Thanks Good. for having me back. Oh, well, you're, you're needed. <laughs> you're needed, <laughs> Gavin. And um, the Brits are uh, out in force here in the European Paratable Tennis Championships, but uh, have you seen Megan play at all before? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Megan's been around the block. She's obviously very young, but still very experienced. She'll she'll be looking to win here. That it is definitely in, in her in her reach. Sandra is one of the top players in her class, but I think Megan is uh, well within herself to get a result here if she plays well. And uh, Sandra, the German competitor, they've warmed up. Certainly had a long battle just uh, the game prior, went, which went to the first five setter of the tournament. Yeah, that's what we're looking for, really, isn't it? Exciting for the for the people at home and exciting for the crowd. The, the long, intense matches. So hopefully we can get another one here. It's been a good atmosphere in the venue, actually. There's, it's a busy little venue here today, and uh, really good to see. Um, which in England is the first day back at school, so a bit good to see a lot of the. Uh, Ball girls and ball boys from the local schools being brought in to support the championships and I'm sure they're having a great time too. And Gavin, how have your players been doing? Uh, we've just had one match so far, so Paddy Vaughan in Class 7 lost out to a uh, Belgian player Ben Despino, 3-1, but really good performance from Paddy. Um, to be honest, he's here more to gain experience than get results, so we were really happy with how he did, and, and we'll see uh, Colin Judge, former European champion, in action later on, so hopefully that's where we'll be getting some wins on the board. And that's what it's all about, and uh, the Paralympics next year in Paris, everybody's ambition. So we're all set here for the first of the sets between Shackleton and Mikola Szczek from Germany. I think from the first point there you can see this is going to be a high tempo game. Both players offensive, really, really strong, close to the table. So it's going to be fast and furious. Really interesting to see how some of these players employ the lob and um, it's, it's been fascinating to watch the different tactics. Yeah, we're unlikely to see much of that here in this class. Obviously, the variations in, in disabilities and abilities in the class four and five ladies, yeah. it's a lot more attacking play close to the table. That's certainly something viewers pick up in time, don't you? The, the different abilities and classifications in para sport, but in, particularly in table tennis, the dexterity of the players are certainly um, impinged if you're in a more difficult class. Yeah, and there's a lot to get your get your head around as a spectator yeah, as well. Absolutely. So evens two two points apiece at the moment. Shackleton with the serve. Picks up the extra point. Yeah, renowned for a good service, Megan, so she'll be looking to get as much advantage when she has service as possible. What a great rally that was. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we're playing defensive back Spain, you can see they're still playing really aggressively. You know, it's, it's, it's quick on the table in comparison to our last game, which was much slower and a more tactical battle. What determines which player is more of an aggressive player and more of a defensive player? Is it just their attitude to the game? Good question. Um, I suppose it's a, a lot of it is how the player develops and how they, what they naturally do as they progress, you know, if they're more comfortable in, in the attacking situations or, or in the defensive. And obviously then the variation of disability too, you know, that plays a part here in, in para table tennis. Well, Shackleton has taken an early lead. She leads 4-2. The German serves, pulls one back. Yeah. 
And in your opinion, Gavin, how many years does it take to build a player into a truly competitive para-athlete? It's very difficult to say because para is such a... It's such a minefield, really. You can find a player that's been playing another sport or, or had an accident later in life, but they have certain abilities that they can pick it up maybe quicker than others. But, I mean, to build a, a kind of top player in the European Championships, you're talking at a minimum of five, six years. And I would say probably on the longer end of that, you know, 10 years, really. Super shot there from the German to pull a point back. 5-4, she trails. And now Megan Shackleton serves. Yeah, big fist from Megan there. You can see she's a player that really plays with momentum. So I think it's important for her to, to get a good start here, try and go 1-0 up. Then, you know, the crowd starts to play a factor. She starts to feel good, and that's where she can really be more positive. We hope you can hear the, the crowd back home watching this on whatever screen you're watching it on. Some good British interest here, as you can imagine. And it's nice to have seen uh, the president of World Table Tennis here today having a look round, never seen this facility before. be in the VIP section I haven't got a chance to meet them yet <laughs> yeah Petra Solon is here and he's somewhere in the building having meetings everywhere all square six apiece nice little bit of short angle play there variation from what we've seen and for for our viewers are players are able to lean on the table, reach across the table? Yeah, as long as they don't put it, place their non-playing hand on the table. That's, that's that's what we've got to avoid. But, but reaching across the table is absolutely fine. And suddenly the German is in a rhythm. Taking an 8-6 lead. Forced errors from Megan. Really needs to sure it up if she's going to take beat a player like Sandra. Well, the Germans certainly in the ascendancy here now. Just a point needed for game. She's calling for a net serve there, if, if you didn't see that. I saw the hand go up. And that, uh, very sporting line. So obviously, if the ball hits the net on the service, it's a retake. First set goes to the German, Sandra Mikolaszek. And... Uh, Megan's got a lot to do here if she's the higher ranked player, you were saying? Yeah, well Sandra would be the would be the higher ranked player, oh, but, Sandra but certainly certainly Megan's right up there. She she'll have her chances. You know, it's not it's not dead and buried after one no, set. No, no, no. Well, we've seen five setters, but uh, it, was, it was close there and then suddenly Sandra made Made hay of those, and you know, like you said, unforced errors there from yeah, Megan it's, kind of, it's stepping it up a gear, really, in the important moments. We were we were really tight there at kind of six, six, five, six, six, and then Sandra stepped it up a gear, and that's what Megan's got to be able to step up and do in in return, you know. And in these group games, I mean, it's uh, there are advantage, there are opportunities to come back, but you, you really want to meet 
beat your take your first win, don't you, from your first game? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It would be it would be uncommon for a player to lose a match in the group and win the tournament. So yes, I think Sandra is the type of player that's here to win and here to win a gold. Do you know about all the other classifications in, in wheelchair as well? So. Is one to five yeah we've got one to five one being uh, one being the, the for want of a better phrase the most disabled yes. and five being the least disabled in the wheelchair classes and then obviously as we move up we've got six to ten which would be standing classes I just love seeing some of the, the the chairs that you see moving around the competitive chairs and there's so much technology in them now it's incredible Megan makes a good start in this second set. 2 0. Oh. Umpire has a problem with the serve by the looks of things. Not sure exactly. I think she's saying that hasn't been thrown high enough or been thrown backwards, maybe. Players have to throw the ball directly in a straight line in the air. Has that been called a let? Looks like she yeah. gave the point. I think they've just scored that point, so uh, must have been some sort of 2-2. Two -two. No, you're right, it was uh, an incorrect serve. But sometimes that kind of thing can spur a player on. You know, Megan's now got a bit, bit between her teeth. Looks a bit unhappy with that decision. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the energy and the momentum might go her way. Interestingly, I was watching her warm up in the, uh, the warm-up hall. Three apiece. For the GB players, I mean, it's sometimes... You're on your home soil, you want to do well, and it's just relaxing into that opportunity. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's a difficult environment as well, as, as much as it's a home comfort, it's a difficult environment to come out to your home fans under pressure, and, and some players will re relish it, and some players maybe will feel extra pressure. Missed opportunity there from Sandra, I would have said. Um, yeah, for the, for the GB team, the English Institute of Sport is their home. So this is where they train, they're familiar with this place. So uh, Yeah, we can see even in, a, in the crowd around here, we've got some of the, the GB badminton team, we've got other athletes in the hall, so that itself brings another degree of pressure. Great shot there from Sandra to level up the scores. Right into the corner. Where's home? Where's the home venue for the Irish team back in home? Uh, I wish we had one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. this this kind of venue is something that we uh, that we would really really love to have, and unfortunately, we don't have a home as of yet. Uh, there is a, a sport, a national sports campus, but it's not currently where we're based as a sport. Right. right. That's a work in progress. Is it? Fascinating. So, the German opening up a little gap again, having been behind, and um, it seems as if Megan can just not, consistency at the moment, it's just not quite there for her. Yeah, I mean, to, to the naked eye, it looks like Me Megan's making a lot of mistakes here, but you have to commend Sandra, she's making a lot of pressure on the ball, good angles, she's, she's kind of forcing the mistakes from Megan, you can see there. Ball comes into Megan's reins, she's not making mistakes. But when, when it's in difficult positions, that's where we, we start to struggle a little bit. Very aggressive shot there from Megan and gets the point. She's rewarded. She got the serve to follow. And again, a good aggressive play with the backhand. Yeah, and this is what she wants a little bit more of. She wants to force Sandra to put the ball to the middle of the table where she can play strong with her backhand or strong with her forehand. But if she allows Sandra to play the angles, that's where she comes into her own. So 
So six apiece here again. It was at this stage in the first set that the German got away from Megan. Lucky, another good angle from Sandra there. Just couldn't couldn't get enough on it, Megan. You can see directly there, Sandra with two services. She just wants to play angles. That's force Megan reaching, and then she's in trouble. The German ahead by two. There's a let. Just over the edge there from the German. Oh, great reactions there from Megan, but another great shot from from the German. That was a heck of a, a rally. Yeah, she did well to get the first it's one back. back. <laughs> Incredible. I think so that nine, would have been seven. straight by me or you. Yeah. Incredible. I love playing this game when I was uh, younger. It's just... Oh, good point there for... The spin seemed to... Seemed to get Sandra confused there. That yeah, it was almost the, the return spin from Sandra's own service that uh, put her under pressure. That's just what you can't afford to do yeah. in these late stages, and that's what separates us at the moment. So there's a game point here for the German. But the serve is with the Brit. Oh, great angle. point. That's a great angle, isn't it? Absolutely. That's what she needs, another one of those now. But we're lucky Megan has her service. Obviously, one of, as I mentioned, one of the strengths of her game. So hopefully she can use it here. I think the German was just playing it safe there to see if Megan would make the mistake. <laughs> Tough. So great shot there from Sandra. She, uh, she goes 11-9, two sets up. That's a big uh, big challenge now for, for Megan. Yeah, that's the problem really here. Sandra is going to even become more relaxed now, more confident with the 2-0 gap in the set. So uh, it puts Megan under a huge amount of pressure to try and turn this around. With this being the first day of competition of the tournament, which is I mean, it's going all the way through to Saturday, I was really fascinated watching uh, um, the equipment control area at the front, looking at the the table tennis bats and so on. what how can you um, generate benefit compared to one bat compared to the other uh, I don't know if benefit is, the, is the, the right way to describe it I would say basically there's different materials so players can have what are called uh, smooth surface rubbers or they could have pimple rubbers and pimples would um, basically reverse the spin so if you're playing a top spin with a normal rubber and a pimple player plays then they're going to reverse so all of a sudden the top spin becomes backspin so that's kind of for a more defensive player generally um, you know it's just I suppose that's their way of trying to gain some form of advantage by playing with unusual uh, equipment okay. at times but there's a million different different technicalities how soft the rubber is how hard the rubber is you know how fast how slow many many different uh, different options out there and it's just what's suited to your style of play is weight an issue? Can you, can yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah, can it can be if, if we really get into the nitty gritty, the, the weight of the rubber is important to the to the absolute best players. Yeah. So here we have the third set. And great shot there from the German. As you say, she's relaxing into this game. She's two 0 up in sets and. And leading 1-0 in this game against serve. Yes, One 
penalties. Great service. Top spin service from Sandra Mikolasic there. Megan unable to return. Another let. You can see there with the service, Megan's return comes high over the net. Generally that's because Sandra has made a top spin service and the ball comes a little bit higher, creating a chance for her to attack. That's the voice of Gavin Maguire, who knows more about this game than certainly I do. And uh, now we're both learning on the job here. <laughs> I hope not. But what we are seeing is um, the German building in confidence. And Megan has an almighty task in front of her to come back from two sets down and 4-1 down. Yeah, I was just about to say, I'd be surprised if we don't see a timeout here from the GB coach. And that's exactly what's happened. That's right. You've got to break the rhythm. And uh I think now at 2-1 and 5-1 down, really, the coach is just going to be saying to her, you've got to, you've got to relax. You've got to go for it now. You've absolutely nothing to lose. You're in a position that, you know, you're, you're definitely not favourite. No. So you've just got to go for it now. I think in these kind of positions, you don't want to look at the the the, the 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 mountain you have to climb. You just play each single point by point yeah, because otherwise it's it mentally becomes too difficult a task. But if you just play the point in front of you and just pick up a little bit of momentum, if you keep winning the next point, you're going to win. Exactly, exactly. Often uh, easier said than done, though. Oh, I know. There we go, a bit of luck. Sometimes you need that. Yeah. Shave the top of the net. You're going to need a few more to get over the hill here, but let's hope so for the GB interest. That's a heck of a shot. She's totally in flow here, Mikolasic. You can, you can really see she's confident in her seated position there. Shoulders are high, she's looking good. And now she's just in, in full flow. feeling here for Megan she's just struggling to get a rhythm Look, she's in a very difficult position she's, she's trying things now you can see she tried to play an angle with an unusual shot from her backhand side it is what she has to do she's got to try new things now to to change the momentum here but it's not working at the moment back ready the German great shot Unlucky there for Megan, tried to return. Just goes over the edge of the table. Signs of life. Yeah. Big forehand from Megan. Both players going for it now. <laughs> Have you been down there, coach? You know, court side, trying to tell your players, what do you do in this position? It's a difficult position for the coach here. I mean. You can't play the game for them, unfortunately. Uh, you'd like to sometimes, but um, right now you're just trying to keep them, keep energy in the body, keep them, keep them fighting for every single ball. You know, table tennis is one of those sports that's very based on momentum. It can shift really, really quickly. Nine four, and that becomes 
10-4. So this is match point. And looking back, the Germans being quite solid and comprehensive, fewer mistakes. Oh, brilliant. Great Oof. counter forehand to, to win us there. 11 4, 3 0 to Sandra Mikolasic. She'll be delighted with that performance against Mika, Megan Shackleton. A really strong opponent, really good player. And to come through 3 0 in the first game here at the European Championship, she'll be delighted. Well, that's a great win for Mikolasic from Germany. Commiserations to Megan Shackleton. And we'll be back with you um, for our next game, which will be Jan. Riapos from Slovakia against Boris Stolkovic from Serbia and that'll be at quarter to one. Thanks to Gavin, be back shortly.
Welcome back. Uh, my name is Yuri Matishan. Welcome back to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield. I'm with Gavin Maguire from the Irish team who's helping me today. And uh, in front of us, uh, Gavin, we've got Jan Riapos uh, from Slovakia. And you say he's pretty highly ranked in the, in the game? Yeah, Jan Riapos will be number five in the world. Um, Boris Stoyakovic would be number 29 in the world so we've got a bit of a gap in ranking but uh, Boris I think is probably a little bit under ranked in my opinion so I wouldn't say it's a straightforward game for Riapos. Well that'd be interesting so uh, underdog would be the Serb and um, Slovakia good history as, as a Serbia in table tennis haven't they they're yeah. great great histories one of the powerhouses all right and these two lads would be very uh, used to training together and being involved in training camps together so Serbia and Slovakia have a good relationship and I think uh, they'll be well used to playing each other which can mean we might see some good rallies here indeed it's interesting how some of these nations produce athletes and there's such a small population um, but really good at sport You're at the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield and uh, home to many, many Paralympians and Olympians. And uh, the competition courts in the heart of the indoor athletic stadium with the surrounding areas providing training and warm-up facilities identical to the competitive table that they're on. So, opening point decided. Slovakia take a 1-0 lead. Jan Riapos. That becomes a 2-0 lead. Riapos to serve. It's 2-0 up. He's certainly dominating very quickly, isn't it? A little lob there from uh, the serve to try and put him out of his rhythm. Yeah, I think we can we can look to see probably a balance between the last two games we've seen. There'll be a bit of attacking play, but also some of this higher angle play. Try and exploit the opponent that they can't reach the short points on the table. Uh, this is a men's wheelchair class two event. So mobility a little. Uh, less free than the class fours and fives, three, four, fives. Yeah, these players would have a more severe, maybe spinal cord injury or or something to that effect, and they would have greatly reduced uh, movement or mobility compared to our our last athletes in class four and five. Oh, there's an example of that. Great serve, soft, deftly over the net. How hard is it to disguise that serve, that soft serve versus the serve there, which uh, 
Yeah, it can, be, it can be very sure. difficult to disguise, and especially in wheelchair table tennis, the racket, the ball, the table, they're all in such close proximity, so it's very difficult to have space to really uh, to put that deception on. That's a great return, a reverse return? Did yeah, you reverse that? return. Heck, heck of a return. An unusual one, to say the least. Ooh, took the edge. Six two to the Slovakian, establishing daylight. Another good return. Umpire just having a word with Stoilkovic here. I think it was about the height of the, the toss. Got to be at least six inches in the air, so I think he wasn't happy that the, the toss was a little bit too low. And that's above the table height, six inches, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Good serve from Boris Stojkovic. Pulls it back to 6-4. There's the lob, killed by that's, the serve. Six that's five. the difference there, the lob shot just a little bit too long within Boris's reach and, and he puts it to bed, you know, so we're playing with very fine margins here in terms of depth on the table that the ball needs to be. And how much can the coach intervene whilst the players are at the table? As long as the ball is not in play, the coach can, can talk to his player. That's a recent rule change, actually. There was no coaching allowed, but I think coaches uh, often bent that rule, so they actually brought in a rule just to allow it in the end that uh, everyone has a level playing field. So Stojkovic has fought back to six all now, and uh, he's with serve. Oh, beautiful, yeah. really wow, good that was angle. Great angles, wasn't it? And you can see there's so much about anticipation in this class. If you kind of telegraph right, you're in position, put the angle out, and and your opponent is gonna is gonna struggle. But if you guess wrong, maybe your body's not gonna let you go to the other side. That's that's the, the fine ones we're talking about. So Stojkovic having been down by four, is leads by one. It's now level. Tried that reverse shot there again, didn't didn't really come off that time. Yeah, it's, I've never seen that before. It's just something I picked up, but uh, Maybe it's his particular skill. There it is. It's that, that equipment we spoke about earlier. Boris would play with uh, pimples on his backhand to try and slow the game down, be more defensive, whereas his forehand rubber would be an attacking rubber. So I guess it's more of a, a quick change or try to deceive the opponent in a, in a quick moment. All square again, eight apiece. This serve with the serve takes the lead this this as you say he's a higher rank maybe ranked 29 but he seems to be neck and neck with the Slovakian who's ranked five yeah I think Stojakovic is a he's a bogey man within the draw you know he's he's, <laughs> he's one of these guys that nobody wants to play he's capable of big wins but maybe not so capable of stringing them together in a row points apiece, 10-9 to Riapos won that last play so he's on oh and that was a game point so first set 11-9 but not much between the players at all no but so often experience prevails in those last moments 9-8 yeah. to Stojkovic and blink of an eye and we're 11-9 we're Jan Riapos Doing the right thing at the right time is so important and certainly when the pressure's on those closing points as you said. But so the rule changes now that you can actually talk in the game 
as long as the ball's not in play. Yeah, as long as the ball's not in play, you can you can say what you want to the player, but obviously if you're shouting into the court, it's likely that your opponent is going to hear what you're saying too, so you've got to be a little bit crafty. Uh -huh. One assumes you can understand each other's languages. Well, that's another one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be struggling with you there, Gavin. Yeah, that's, that's more of an accent <laughs> thing, let's say. That's cool. I'm trying to tone it down just for you. Indeed, indeed. I keep thinking Westlife's going to come flying around the corner or something. <laughs> <laughs> that shows my age, I think. So he's uh, Riapos, a potential gold me medalist here today, the Europeans, so he would certainly be in the. He'd be in the medal hunt. On let's the podium, that way. I would be. I would be surprised if he took home a gold from this event. We have a couple of really strong players, Raphael Schuper and Fabian Lamoureux in Class 2. They would be the favourites for gold and silver, really. Um, but certainly medal hunt. And, has, and, and the rules between uh, games, what's the length of time that you... Yeah, we've got one minute in between points, but as you can see here, Stojakovic has, has left the court, I think, uh, for potentially a toilet break, uh, which are allowed, obviously. That's interesting. And how long can a toilet break last? As long as it needs, or what's yeah, the rules? Yeah, I think, I think the... The rules would be you have maybe five minutes, but in, in para table and it's a little bit different yeah. when there's mobility issues and, and, and several different issues at play. So we'll, we'll see how quick he gets back. I think the, the head umpire has been informed and it'll be in his, in his control how, how long it takes. Wow. Well, that can really play with your mind. Um, when somebody's gone for between five and ten minutes. Yeah, well, maybe he learned a trick or two off uh, Novak Djokovic's countryman. <laughs> That's true. That is true. And they're playing right now in America, aren't they? It's the US Open. So we have a break in play at the moment, whilst uh, Boris Stojkovic from Serbia has taken... Um, a toilet break for all wants and purposes and he's uh, he's disappeared after losing the first match 11-9 or first game 11-9 and uh, a good close contest we've got a little glimpse of some of the standing players there in the background now what's going on absolutely it's a great shot across all the courts here today at the English Institute of Sport We're focusing on two tables, one table one and table six. Um, so we're featuring wheelchair and standing competitions and classes in both. <laughs> and when can the uh, opposition's coach and players start complaining then? Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a tough one to say really, but I think Riapos doesn't look too concerned there in the corner, so I think they're they're happy enough that this is a, a genuine necessity. And in terms of classification, you're already been you've been classified before you've come to a championship like this. It's not about being classified or reclassified. At yeah, these events. There, there can be reclassifications. We've seen a couple here this week that before the event, the, the classifiers will be in the hall two days before the event. And for example, GB's Ross Wilson was reclassified, a former world champion in Class 8, reclassified to Class 9, and, and that puts a big, uh, a, big, a big change into the draw right. for, for Class 8 players and 9 players unexpectedly. And does Class 9, then, that implies there's been an improvement in the players mobility it's, it's a tricky one to say I think uh, I, I'm not exactly sure of the ins and outs of, of the medical conditions but I think they feel that Ross is more 
similarly similar similar mobility issues as the, the players in class nine he's closer to them than he is the class eights but it's a it's a very very wide range of disabilities on on display here and i'm no expert no no it's um you know it's, it's always a challenge um well, it's not table tennis. We spent three weeks organising an event very recently in Birmingham, which was for the blind and partially sighted, and we classified 300 athletes in that um, space of 10 days. And you know, the classifications between totally blind to partially sighted and between is is quite a challenge in, in para sports. So um, certainly, when you're coming to major championships like this you want to have the knowledge that you know your classification is pretty solid and you're not going to have a change uh, or it's under review yeah i mean 99 percent of the playing field know that their their classification is safe going into a tournament however those who would have a review they'd have prior warning you know you'd have two months notice that a review is going to happen or maybe even three months so you are going into the championships knowing it's going to happen and so ross wilson will have this year in the hope of preparing for the Paralympics. Yeah, you can actually see him in the background of the shot there. He's uh, in the black shirt. Uh, that's Ross Wilson there. Yeah, you've got great eyes. That's Will. Yeah, yeah. To the right of the screen. Yeah, to the right of the screen, exactly. That's Ross about to receive serve. And, um, yeah, he's got one year in preparation now. He went in at number two seed for the, for the class nine. His ranking uh, translated into a, a number two seed. So still quite high on the list, still in pole position to, to qualify, but maybe the goalposts will change in terms of what he expects in terms of results. And this tournament has uh, 22 places up for grabs for Paris 2024 in terms of uh, getting to those Paralympic Games and uh, for wheelchair and standing, men and women. So a lot, a lot uh, riding on getting through in this tournament for athletes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the champion in every class, is, it's a golden ticket, really. It's not just a, a European champion, it's a golden ticket to be guaranteed for Paris, which gives you a lot of pressure off for the year in the lead-up to the Games. You know, you're not sweating for qualifications, travelling around the world to many different tournaments. You can you can pick and choose, and, and you can stay at home for longer training blocks, and it's, uh, it's a lot of comfort in being a champion here today. And that's what This week, I should say. This week, indeed. And that's what these players will be trying to uh, achieve by getting through to Paris 2024 as we still wait for Stojkovic to return is he accompanied to the boys room if you, for want of a better yeah, word I mean there, there would be again varying ranges of disabilities and abilities so I would imagine that Boris would have someone there to, to support him in terms of his, his wheelchair and, and moving to and from so I would guess he'd have a co have company. And we're going on quite long now, so I don't know if there's any other issues at play. I mean, we've no guarantee that it's a toilet break. It could be it could be an injury break. Got you. But I think uh, coach has a smile on his face, so he doesn't look too concerned. No, no. Everybody's being patient, particularly uh, the Atlas. But there's no sign of Stojkovic yet, so we'll um, we'll just hold off on the commentary and wait until our Serbian athlete returns.
So we're back on table one here at the European Para Table Tennis Championships. Um, Boris Stojkovic took a break. It seems that everybody was happy with that break and uh, Gavin, quite a lengthy one. Yeah, a long one. It almost feels like we're starting a new match here, but important to remember that Jan Riopos is 1-0 uh, up in sets here, so he's in the, the leading position. Uh, the graphics back on screen with you and 1-0 uh, to the Slovakian. And you can just see here on the screen with uh, Boris and Jan both have straps on their arms to, to help them with the, holding the, the table and a spat. Uh, indeed. Interestingly, they've not had another warm-up straight into the game. So yeah, straight in. <coughs> I mean, there would be a, maybe a short warm-up if there was a broken ball or something along, along those lines. However, not for a toy to break straight back in. Well. Beautiful angles, Jan Riapos. Gets one back, Riapos. Stojkovic to serve. Doesn't look happy, he's talking a lot to himself, Stojkovic. Yeah. Ooh. Look at the net there and... Uh, I wonder if Stojkovic is perhaps in some pain, potentially. It could be. He doesn't look too comfortable, comfortable out there. And I don't know if that's to do with how he feels he's playing or, or there's a, a larger issue at play. And that could well be the factor, actually. Um, three points each. Uh, looks as if it's got a lot bittier the, the game all of a sudden so <laughs> it's uh, Stojkovic has gone 5-3 up or just 5-4 just made an enforced error there but uh, good change out to the foreign there use yeah. that reverse shot that you're uh, a fan of <laughs> yeah. have you ever coached that yeah, one of my, my main player, Colin Judge, now from the t from the team Ireland, would uh, he only has one arm, so nice. he would actually use a reverse shot like that quite a lot. Stojkovic leads five six. A lot of spin on those shots. Takes a seven five lead. I'm just looking at the body language of uh, the Apos. Doesn't seem as happy. Oh, great shot there. I'm, I'm not sure Jan Riapos ever uh, smiles while on court. <laughs> That's stoic Eastern European, I can vouch for that. My old man wouldn't smile too often. You can see again trying that reverse shot down the line, but making quite a few errors there too. For, for every one or two points he wins with it, he seems to lose three or four, so I'm not sure it's the, the right tactic for him today. See, once again, reverse shot. Did take the attacking balls on, but Riapos was ready for him. Riapos beginning to uh, regain the ascendancy in the game. 9-7. Falls back to 9-8, Stojkovic. A little bit of a lucky ball off the net there for Riapos. Yeah. 
Takes a 10-8 lead and a set point here to go 2-0 up. Just felt like a very scrappy game. Great serve there. A variation there, taking the short serve. Most have been long and fast, and this time just changing it up, and Riapos unable to reach. Well, he pulls it back to 10 apiece. You can see the, the coach there from the Serbian team with his hands in the air saying, finally he did what I said. <laughs> Indeed. Good point there for the Slovakian. 11-10. feel that this is the important game, isn't it? If, if Stojkovic pulls back... And we have a chance. That's that fine margins we spoke about earlier. Yep. Just too long on the table. Riapos could reach in and smash winner. 12-10. Gave as good as he got in that particular exchange. And now it's two sets to love and it's a mountain to climb. But there's not been much between the two, as you've said. Yeah, very close. 11-9 and 12-10. Interestingly enough, that set only took six minutes compared to 19 in the first, so um, shorter rallies, a little bit quicker. Indeed. It's interesting, and I, I really like to see that, um, you know, Paralympians could be playing a little bit longer in their careers as well. It's good to see that not everybody's, you know, 19 and 20 years of age. There are people playing into the... 30s and 40s. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, longevity in table tennis players. I mean, it's, a, it's I suppose, a, a lower impact sport, so bodies can, can hold on a little bit longer. You know, there's a wide range of... Uh, we see players at 15 and 16 competing for medals. We see players at 45 and 50 competing for medals. So that means the depth is uh, it's incredible, really. And in terms of European para table tennis, how does that sit globally in terms of uh, relative strength? Uh, it's, it's very close with Asia. I mean, in, in able body table tennis, Asia would be far and away better. But actually, European para table tennis sits very, very close with Asia. We would have probably as many world number ones as they do. So we're well, a lot closer in stature. That's good to see. But I think if you were a betting man, you'd probably bet on the Chinese national team. They're national sport, and Aye. they really are the top dogs in table tennis. Absolutely. I think the top four or five men, women are Chinese in the able-bodied game. So, yeah, Interestingly, in the able-bodied side, they, uh, they actually had to bring in a rule that you were only allowed to send two players because China were winning all the medals. Indeed. Well, they won't tell you that's the reason. No. <laughs> So Riapos opens up with the first point in what could be the third and defining set. And Riapos beginning to 3-1. Uh, he leads now. But serve goes to Stojkovic. I'd like to see a bit more of that from Boris now. The short serve seems to have proved quite effective. Giving him a lot of opportunities for either a direct mistake from Riapos or a chance to come and attack afterwards. Fascinating. If you've got long reach in this game, it does make a big difference, doesn't it? So long levers works. Absolutely. And para table tennis is all about exploiting people's uh, disabilities for, again, want of a better phrase, but, yeah. but that's what it is. It's tactics, and, and players are always trying to make the players out of their comfort zone, out of areas that they, they can't quite reach or can't quite move to. So it's a good tactic for, for both.
Um, an adjustment needed there by Stojkovic. Couldn't quite make it. So. Uh, The Atlas leaves 5-3. Mistake there from Stojkovic. Timeout call there from the Serbian coach. So we're going to go to the corners and get a bit of advice. 6-3 he trails and 2-0. And, oh. and uh, you can see he looks exasperated, doesn't he, Stojkovic? And a lot of movement going on around him and he's just not settled. Not too happy with what's yeah. going on here. He's, he feels he should be doing a little bit better in the game. And you can see Riapos hasn't even gone to the corner. So what does that tell you about how comfortable he feels? Absolutely. That's amazing. That SVK is all you can see. And uh, what's interesting, Serbians, they're always quite demonstrative people as well. You always get with the, it the Italians and so on. They, you know. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, body actions and, and hand gestures happening here for negative or positive I think that's probably given Riapos even more confidence yeah, he's uh, as you say he's quite a stoic man just collected doesn't seem to be put off by anything I think he didn't want to take a strap off there's obviously also a lot of it, a lot of effort involved in strapping up the racket to the hand and Riapos felt it was better to stay at the table in comfortable and in his flow. It could well be that Stojkovic knew that this is his big game that he needed to overcome ideally but uh, proving a tough one for him. Good shot from Riapos taking control again making Boom. sure that Boris doesn't get any momentum after that timeout. Certainly taking control now, Riapos, 7-3 he leads, but can the Serb gain some momentum? Total Doesn't control, look, Riapos yeah, here, really. Yeah, indeed. One-way traffic. Oh, unusual error there from the Slovakian. Stojkovic sets himself. And short serve didn't work that time. Riapos ready and again the fine margins. He reaches and it's point over. Incredible agility there to, uh, to get that return right into the corner. But he tries it and this time it did work. Good point there for Stojkovic. Takes him another. Do we give him any chance here? Um, no. Not really. Having said that. <laughs> I think he heard you. <laughs> he's got three points of the bounce. And time out for Riapos called now. So obviously he's a little bit concerned that Stojkovic is in the ascendancy. Just going to come to the corner, get a word of advice, settle things down. Just to break that momentum. Yeah, very important for Riapos' tournament here that he gets a win on the board, so he's not taking any chances. Just get to the corner, sure things up. Yeah, you want to bury this game now, don't you? When you've two sets up, 9-7 ahead, you want to bury it. You don't want to go into a five-setter. of. No, you don't want to expend any unnecessary energy. He wants to you know, finish this game, get stretched, and then off for lunch and back to the hotel for, for a rest for, for further games. And when you play at these type of events and you, you go a long distance into a game, it's emotional energy as much as it is physical, and that's sometimes more brutal to recover from that um, as you see in the game of tennis when you get to a five setter you know it's tough mentally
So the taping of the bat to the hand. We're ready to resume. 9-7. These two services could do it. Nope. The serve is with the serve. And a good one again. Riapos with an error. So Boris gives himself a chance again. He's been in every set so far. And he's had a 5-0 and run here. Wow. Did he hit the table? I'm I think he has, but... 10-8 um, oh, Riapos, it was ten eight. an error. Difficult to see from our camera angle. Match point. Yeah. And Riapos pulls that win off, 11-8. And 3-0, 11-8. Good, comp good fight, but um, just a little bit more in the uh, in the tank there for Riapos, who's a quite a cool character. He certainly made him work for it, and I think that's a great run out for Riapos. Really, three really close sets, difficult game, came through 3-0. So he'll be delighted going into the next match. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed it so far. We'll be having a break on this particular table, and uh, we'll be back for our next game at uh, three o'clock on, on this table. And um, we'll be back to you later on this afternoon.